in the Atlantic coast of Nova Scotia, you may find an old lighthouse whose keeper a few years ago had strange reasons for being happy in his isolation. heard these footsteps, often it was said, but was not afraid, because he knew they only came from the other keeper, who was swept off the rocks and drowned many years before. They kept him company. In times before the present century, many of Nova Scotia's people were isolated in small settlements along the coast. Storytelling was everybody's pastime in the evening. It became very quiet at night. In one lonely house, a sailor's wife, a cousin of hers and her two boys, were turning in one night, while the man of the house was away at sea. Next day, the neighbors came and heard a story that was not hard to understand for anyone raised on local folklore. They all knew there was a type of ghost called a forerunner, a ghost that came in the form of sound but not sight and told of impending death. Well, any sailor's wife would know whose death to expect when her husband was away on the ocean. But this time, she was wrong. It was one of her little boys who passed away a week later.
But a forerunner could help a man if he understood what it was saying. On one of Nova Scotia's sailing vessels, there was a sailor who owed his life to a forerunner. When he came on board, everything was normal. The ship was sailing the next day. no question in his mind about what he had heard. The mast. He'd heard the main mast fall. It must be a warning. A few days later came the news. The ship had gone down in a storm and all hands were lost. There are many different forms a ghost can take. Some appear before death, others after. Many of them appear at the moment of death to someone many miles away. Some of them are said to repeat over and over in the same place an event which must have happened there long ago. And yet a scene like this may have to wait for centuries before being witnessed by someone with a gift for seeing such things. What would you make of a ball of light that seemed to pick on someone to follow around? No one seemed to know. Like most ghosts, it seemed to be trying to say something, but no one ever got the message. Suppose you were out walking and came on a neat patch of flowers growing in the middle of nowhere. What would that mean? Well, if you'd been raised the right way, you'd know. The fellow it happened to knew what it meant. 
buried treasure. No doubt about it. There was buried treasure under those flowers. had vanished and could not be found again even on the same day that's where folklore was sort of stuck for an explanation I mean it had to be treasure what else could it be you see pirates were some of the earliest explorers of the coves and islands along Nova Scotia's shores and later after people had settled some families would get rich suddenly so there was good reason for everyone to be conscious of treasure. And that made the job of digging for it even harder than it might have been. You had to dig in secret, therefore at night, to avoid detection by your neighbors. But worst of all, you had to contend with the ghost of the man killed by the pirate captain, buried with the treasure to guard it. This ghost was said to have extraordinary powers. And whatever happened, you must not speak in its presence. That would offend it, and there was no telling then what it might do. Some people believed it had the power to make the treasure recede into the ground just to spite you.
When somebody dies, it's common enough even today that something they treasured is buried with them. There used to be some strong beliefs to go over that. Leave them lay was the rule. And any man who broke it did it with bad feelings in his heart. were dead from the shock of seeing a ghost. And yet the lady, buried only for a few hours, did not behave like a ghost. She went home. Nobody could remember just how long it was that she stayed around after her return from the grave. What they did remember was that she never smiled. Like all God-fearing people, most Nova Scotians observed the Sabbath the way they should. But a few of them didn't. And there was one group who thought Sunday was a time for gambling and drinking and the devil knows what else. With so many stories known to so many people and so much talk about them, a ghost would always be a ghost to a true believer even if he didn't pay too much heed to the Lord. So when a strange fellow appeared who was flesh and blood, could do things a normal person couldn't, well, maybe then all you could do was ask yourself why he came. The reason might have come from you. Mm -hmm. 